Voyager I is recovering. The spacecraft is transmitting intelligible data again. It appears that NASA engineers have managed to solve the problems of the Voyager I probe. For the first time since November last year, Mission Control has received clear data on the condition of the probe and its scientific instruments. Voyager I stopped sending science and engineering data to Earth on November 14, 2023. Although experts determined that the probe was receiving commands and seemed to be operating normally, the mission control received a completely unreadable signal. The repeated sequences of zeros and ones have been described by NASA specialists as digital gibberish. Since then, experts have had no knowledge of the probe's status. They had no insight into key parameters regarding the ship's propulsion, power and control systems. A special team of engineers tasked with solving the Voyager I problem confirmed in March that the problem was related to one of the spacecraft's three computers, called the Flight Data System FDS. The task of the FDS is, among other things, collecting data from scientific instruments and data on the condition and location of the probe. The system combines this information into one data package and sends it to the so-called Telemetry Modulation Unit TMU, a subsystem that is used to communicate with Earth. It turned out that the whole mess was caused by one malfunctioning chip, responsible for storing part of the FDS memory, including part of the FDS computer software code. Missing code fragments made the data transmitted to Earth unreadable. Unable to repair the chip, the engineering team decided to place the missing code elsewhere in the FDS memory. However, no single location is large enough to accommodate the entire section of code, so experts decided to split the missing sequences into fragments and place them in different locations in the FDS. The separated fragments also had to be adjusted to function as a whole. Experts began by extracting the code responsible for packaging the probe's engineering data. They sent him to a new place in FDS memory on April 18. Voyager I is more than 24 billion kilometers from Earth. The radio signal reaches the spacecraft in approximately 22.5 hours. You have to wait the same amount of time for an answer. The modification worked. On April 20, Mission Control finally received an intelligible signal from Voyager I for the first time in five months. NASA received information about the status of the probe and its scientific instruments. Now specialists will adapt the remaining sequences of the FDS software, which include, among others, transmitting scientific data to Earth. Additional commands are scheduled to be sent in the coming weeks that will deploy the remaining portion of the missing FDS system code. The Voyager I probe launched from Earth in 1977 with a mission to visit the gas giants Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. In the same year, a twin structure, the Voyager 2 probe, was launched into space. In 1989, as the probes completed their tour of the outer planets, they began their mission to reach the heliopause. The heliopause is the boundary of the heliosphere, a protective bubble of particles and magnetic fields produced by our sun.
At this boundary, the solar wind loses its speed, and the pressure of the galactic winds begins to outweigh the pressure of the solar wind. This boundary is approximately 18 billion kilometers from the Sun. The Voyager I probe crossed the edge of the heliosphere and entered interstellar space in 2012. Six years later, the Voyager 2 probe also did this. The probes have reached farther than any other man-made object. But the long years spent in the harsh environment of space took their toll on the probes. The Voyager mission has been ongoing for over 45 years. The weakening power source forced the mission managers to turn off most of the scientific instruments. In addition, failures of both structures are becoming more and more common. Mission managers are aware that eventually a problem will arise that will end the Voyager mission. However, if you can avoid it, you will eventually run out of energy. Both structures are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which work worse and worse every year. According to NASA estimates, Around 2025 generators may no longer be able to provide adequate power. Junk food can cause permanent brain damage. Rats fed from an early age with foods high in fat, salt and sugar, known as, junk food, have permanent brain damage. It turns out that a bad diet can interfere with your ability to remember for a long time. Junk food is a term for cheap food products with a high content of fats, sugars and salt. As well as artificial additives, dyes and flavor enhances, but with a negligible content of other nutrients necessary for the proper functioning of the body. This group includes unhealthy snacks, such as chips, sweet carbonated drinks and french fries. New research published in Brain, Behavior and Immunity shows that growing up on such a diet can lead to permanent memory impairment. In recent years, junk food has often been linked by scientists to various health problems. In research from 2020, Scientists showed that a week for the so-called the Western diet was enough for the students participating in the study to achieve worse results in memory tests. More on this topic in the text. Western diet may impair brain function and affect appetite control. Other studies have shown a link between poor diet and Alzheimer's disease. People with Alzheimer's disease tend to have lower levels of a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine in the brain, which is essential for well-functioning memory and functions such as learning, attention, arousal and involuntary muscle movements. Considering previous work, Scott Kanowski from the University of Southern California and his colleagues wondered how young people are affected by a diet high in fat and sugar, especially during adolescence, when their brains undergo significant development. The team conducted their research on rats. Scientists monitored the level of acetylcholine in a group of rats that had been on a diet from an early age that could easily be described as a Western diet, i.e. fatty, sweet and highly processed. Rodents fed normally also took part in the study. They acted as a control group. Scientists also prepared a special test for rats that analyzed their reactions to specific tasks. 
This was to test their memory. This test involved allowing rats to explore new objects in different locations. After a few days, the researchers reintroduced the rats to an almost identical location, which differed from the previous one in that it had one additional object. The results of the experiment showed that rodents fed junk food behaved as if they did not remember what object and where they had seen it before. They were unable to identify new objects in the area they had explored a few days earlier. These memory problems persisted even after switching to a healthy diet. However, rats from the control group demonstrated place knowledge. This appears to be because diets high in simple sugars and saturated fats interfere with the signaling of acetylcholine a key neurotransmitter in animal brains that is responsible for memory. Rats in the junk food group had reduced levels of the protein that transports acetylcholine in the hippocampus, an area of the brain that helps consolidate memories and spatial information. Further imaging showed that this reduction impaired acetylcholine signaling in animals that performed poorly on memory tasks. Acetylcholine signaling is a mechanism that helps encode and remember events, analogous to episodic memory in humans, which allows us to remember past events. This signal does not appear to occur in animals that grew up on a diet high in fat and sugar, explained Hannah Hayes. Kanowski emphasized that adolescence is a very sensitive period for the brain. Important changes then take place in it. Observations of rats showed that memory problems were long-lasting. Unfortunately, some things that may be more easily reversible in adulthood are less reversible when they occur in childhood, he said. In further research, the researchers tested whether memory damage in rats raised on junk food could be reversed by using drugs that induce the release of acetylcholine. After administering these agents, the rat's memory was restored. Whether the results of these studies can be translated to humans is another question. Similar studies should be conducted with adolescents. However, the work of scientists shows what a poor diet can do and adds further evidence to the already accumulated evidence of the harmful effects of junk food. It reached up to 15 meters in length and weighed a ton. A new species of prehistoric snake has been identified. Scientists have identified a previously unknown species of ancient snake that may have been one of the largest snakes to ever crawl on Earth. According to estimates, this reptile could reach up to 15 meters in length and weigh a ton. The fossilized remains of an ancient snake were discovered in a coal mine in Panandro, Gujarat, Western India. A total of 27 vertebrae were unearthed, up to 6 cm long and 11 cm wide. Due to their large size and the fact that they were partially obscured by sediment, they were initially thought to belong to some extinct crocodile. However, recent analysis of the fossilized vertebrae showed that they belonged to a previously unknown species of huge prehistoric snake. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, Scientific Reports.
The researchers admitted that they were looking for something completely different in the mine. We were actually looking for fossils of early whales in this place. We found not only whales, but also plenty of other vertebrate fossils, including snakes, says Sunil Bajpai from the Indian Institute of Technology in Rocky. Based on the size of its vertebrae, scientists estimated that the species could have reached a length of 11 to 15 meters and its weight could have exceeded a ton. The researchers acknowledge that their estimates are uncertain, but suggest that the newly identified reptile, which they named Vasuki indicus, may have been the size of the largest snake in history. Titanoboa, which became extinct about 58 million years ago. The estimated body length of Vasuki indicus is comparable to that of Titanoboa, although Titanoboa's vertebrae are slightly larger than those of Vasuki indicus. However, at this point we cannot say for sure whether Vasuki indicus was more massive or slender compared to Titanoboa, says Bajpai. Given its size and mass, scientists believe that the snake was a slow-moving predator that attacked by surprise, lying in wait for its prey, much like today's anacondas and swamp pythons. Once it had caught its prey, it would wrap itself around it and strangle it. Researchers indicate that this snake lived in a terrestrial environment or in swamps. It is difficult to say at this point exactly what animals he was hunting. It should be noted, however, that in the same rock unit where the remains of Vasuki indicus were found, fossils of rays. Sharks, catfish, turtles, crocodiles, and primitive whales were also found. No remains of any land mammals were found, admitted the authors of the study. By assessing the size, shape and characteristics of the fossils and comparing them with known species, scientists placed the snake in the now extinct family Machoeidae. They estimate that Vasuki indicus developed in a warm climate where the average temperature was around 28 degrees Celsius, much warmer than today. They estimated the age of the find at 47 million years. Currently, the largest snake is the reticulated python. It can reach from 6 to 9 meters in length.